what do we want to be doing? Get the device? I guess... I think we should either go back to the lighthouse. Probably the lighthouse. The other option would be the cavern, but I think we would die if we go there. Uh, okay, the obelisk. As you step into the open square, you hear a sudden commotion. Several crowds of people are converging onto the town square from different directions. You can hear their shouts and see the flickering glow of their torches as the mob begins to swarm in from the north and east. Okay, so this finally is what I was waiting for. The side alley to be useless. We can probably, like, check out what's going on without dying. But first, of course, we just need to die because that's what <laughs> we do best. So we can't see the mob. <clears throat> Obelisk. Uh, the obelisk grows, glows red with the bloody light of their torches. They are almost here. You'd better find somewhere to hide. Quickly. Hide. In the obelisk. Well, I just want to get the death. There's nowhere you can hide here. Robed men brandishing torches pour into the square, rallying around the obelisk at its center. Several of them seem to be struggling with someone. You huddle back into the shadows, but unfortunately your clothes are clearly recognizable in the glare of the torches. Someone points and shouts, It's her! Get the bitch! There is no time to run. Heavy boots on the cobblestones. Hangs! Lunging toward you. They are everywhere, grabbing you from every side, immobilizing you. Someone's huge, callous paw closes around your windpipe and starts to squeeze. Just before you block out, you can feel yourself being lifted off your feet. You have died. Very nice. Okay. So let's restore. Uh, yeah, I think it's an easy... Just go to the side alley. And actually, while we're at it, let's... Um, I think we should remove the trench coat and put on our robe. They're probably all dressed in the robes. Okay. Uh, east. Okay. A uh, sizzling bolt of lightning cuts through the night sky, illuminating your surroundings in a sudden sheet of blinding white radiance that leaves eerie green afterimages scarred onto your retinas. <laughs> Get the fuck out of town. Oh, he's declared the game? Cool. How about that? A text adventure. Cool in this day and age. I love it. I love it. Oh, no, wait. Sorry. I didn't read it far enough <laughs> until you told me it was all text. No longer cool. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so we're in the uh, side alley. The blind, the dead end. Uh, the obelisk glows red. Okay, they're almost here. A monstrous clap of thunder. Okay, so uh, we can, through the narrow narrow and sha heavily shadowed opening to the northeast, we can see the square and the obelisk. So can we see the obelisk from the side alley? Although you're too far away to read the hieroglyphs on its sides, you have an otherwise excellent view of the obelisk from here. In the distance, you can hear the lonesome... All right, the train whistle. Robed men brandishing torches pour into the square, rallying around the obelisk at its center. Several of them seem to be struggling with someone. Uh, I wonder who this someone could be. Is there anyone they haven't killed that's... Oh, it could be Mrs. Greer, maybe. Or it could be Jeffrey. It could be Jeffrey Greer, maybe. I can't see any such thing. People? Uh -huh. I guess just wait until something happens. I guess we'll save here. But Side alley. Uh, wait. You wait helplessly. The struggling men step forward, and you can see that they have the old bum from the vacant lot. Oh, it's Dr. Timothy Rebus. His wrists are bound and his arms held by two cultists on either side. Oh, I did type in X-Men, didn't I? Yeah, examine men. Although he screams and writhes with frantic desperation, the frail old drunkard is no match for his captors. Someone raises his hand for silence. You can't quite see him from where you are, and the mob quiets down. Even the old bum screams lower to a fearful whimpering. Okay, then we have the lightning again. Overhead, the swollen clouds flicker ominously with a greenish haze of sheet lightning. The bum. It is the bum. So I figure we let's just, like, wait it out, see what happens, and then we'll know how to proceed with, like, how to save him, I guess. He does have the amulet, remember, so he'll... He'll at least be protected from uh, Croesus. However, that I can't say the same about the mob. And I can't even see anything from here. All right, so let's just wait and see what happens. You wait helplessly. My brethren, 
intones the leader. We are gathered here to meet up bloody justice upon one who has sinned against us. This one! He jabs a finger at the old bum. Has divulged our secrets to an outsider and betrayed the sacred trust of our brotherhood. For this his soul must be condemned forever. Embraced and insisted within the necrotic folds of the womb of Nehilim. At this, the crowd lets loose with a roar of approval, while the old bum throws back his head and shrieks helplessly into the storm. Kawam! <laughs> Ex bum. <laughs> uh, Madman uh, ate Chuck's brains and then cried for joy and went uh, <laughs> hopping about town. I guess he was so happy to be freed. So a couple things here. Either one, we follow we follow everybody to the um, womb of Nihilim, which is in the cavern area. Probably what we need to do. If that doesn't work out, then I think since we are wearing the robe, we would sort of sneak our way into the mob. But I don't think they're sacrificing him here at the obelisk, are they? Probably not. You know what? I bet you there's some way the square opens up and then you can go right down. Because that's the top of the obelisk. And uh, the cavern with the altar and the base of the obelisk is obviously right underneath the uh, town square. So let's just wait again. You wait helplessly. The cultists drag the bum over to the monument and prepare to lift him up. Suddenly he makes a break for it and gets about two yards before the cultists bring him down. As the old man's body hits the ground, a small shiny object falls out of the bum's clothes and bounces out across the cobblestones unnoticed by all. Cultists carry the bum back and lift him up onto the monument, hanging him by the wrists from the iron ring set into its tip. So poor bum, he now lost the only protection he had, the amulet. Now we know what the iron ring is for, of course. You pick it up and place it in your purse. Oh, so since it's all connected, yeah, I guess they could do the the womb can open up here, even surface level. So can I take the amulet? No, I cannot. All right, so I guess we could save. Well, we want to. Yeah, may as well save. Again, sixty. Uh, try to get it. Nah, eh, let's just wait. Let's just play it out. See what happens. He'll probably die, but I don't know if we want that to happen. You wait helplessly. Please. Stabs the old man pitifully. Please, I, I did. I swear, I didn't tell nobody nothing. So I didn't. I swear to God I didn't tell! Before the old man can finish his plea, a dozen cultists brandishing long metal rods begin brutally beating him. You avert your eyes, his screams are quickly cut off as his ribs are staved in, and soon all you can hear are the horrible thuds and the wet snapping sound of breaking bones. Ouch. Alright, let's tr let's see if we can let's see if we can undo that move and intervene to save him. Let's see if it'll work. We we could still get uh, made. Last time we were wearing the hood, hooded robe, and we went into the crowd. We were st we were still made. Let's see if this time will be any different. Okay. Up, uh, up, uh, up, uh, up. Uh. No, nope, he still died. Okay. Um. Maybe if we go in earlier. It, it seems like we didn't get made. So. I'm going back earlier. Maybe we can get the amulet when it's dropped. Yep, here we go. Okay, so the bum is here. Alright, so we're able to do this from the square because we have the rope, we're wearing the robe. So let's just wait until. Ah, our umbrella's gone again. Did we lose it permanently? Does not matter? I don't know, maybe they could. <laughs> maybe our robe would get too wet or something? I don't know. Okay, here's the, uh, here's the amulet. The cultists carry the bun back up. Okay, take the amulet. Your score has gone up by two points. So I guess there's no way you can really save him. Yeah, so so sorry. Well, he's not technically dead yet. He just has a broken rib cage. But we do have the amulet back. Back in our possession. We're at 62 points now. Um... Should we like toss him the amulet? Well, let's just see what happens. I guess I don't know. At 62. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not dead yet. Where as again? I'm not dead. 
All right, let's just wait and see what happens. What's next? Although it seems to go on forever, the slaughter is finished in less than a minute. The crowd backs away, its cheering and chanting diminished to a low hypnotic murmur. The cult is quickly dispersed back into the streets, and within moments the square is once again empty, except for the mutilated thing hanging from the obelisk. The thing being the bum? You can't see any such thing. The poor man's torn and broken body has been savaged nearly beyond recognition. You can hardly bear to look at him. You don't suppose the bum would care for that. Well, he wouldn't care for anything. He's dead. All right, let's restore. So, <clears throat> can we, like, throw him the amulet? Give amulet to bum? It is far too late. Oh, sor sorry. Yeah. I guess there was no way around that. He had to die so that we could live. We could get the amulet back. Uh, we can always restore if it turns out to be an issue, but... My, my, my concern is how do we get back down to that cavern? <laughs> I wouldn't quite say that, VDR. I wouldn't quite say that. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't quite say that. I'm just very badly burnt and beaten. And bloodied. Wow, it seems like a long time since we uh, <laughs> since we beat Leisure Suit Larry 2, doesn't it? Jeez. Alright, so... Uh, yeah, so I guess the... Uh, let's make it to the lighthouse, I guess. Maybe this time we can go straight across the bridge at this time? Uh, as you approach the bridge, you see a hulking shadow lurking about on the far bank. You slow down warily, remembering the townsfolk who threatened you earlier, peering through the darkness and obscuring rain to catch a glimpse of the person. Then the figure moves, moves slightly, and you realize that it's much larger than a man. In fact, the figure isn't shaped anything like a man at all. A sudden crack of lightning illuminates the bridge for a brief, horrible instant, and in that instant, you see it. In the next few moments, your battered mind manages to blot out the memory of that bloated, bear-like, armless trunk, those thick, double-jointed legs that end in shiny black hooves, that writhing forest of fleshy tendrils crowning the torso in place of a proper head. But you are not, and will never be, able to banish that horrible, searing memory of that thing's misplaced face which leers madly out at you from the side of the trunk. That child's face on a monster's body. The clouds overhead mutter restlessly to themselves. The creature lurches toward you, its hooved feet thumping heavily on the old stone bridge. Okay, maybe we should have gone through the sewer after all. <laughs> Jeez. Unfortunately, forcing yourself to gaze into the monster's countenance is finally more than your mind can bear, and your senses snap inside your head like so many rotted hawsers. You can only stand, paralyzed, as the thing lumbers toward you with its tendrils writhing and groping, and your hysterical laughter is drowned out by the thunder, and your horrified tears are washed away by the rain. You have died. This is your darkest hour. Indeed, indeed so. So the only thing I could think, uh, we'll give it maybe one shot of trying to do something against the beast, but probably you're just supposed to go underneath it. I'm guessing you just use the amulet to protect yourself. Uh, like maybe if we hold the amulet, hold hold up the amulet, something like that. Um, I mean, although I guess it's not, it's not really Croceus, is it? Is it the, it's the same creature that was after us back at the well, right? And I think the last time we did... Oh, we hid from it. So maybe we jumped down. Probably we just jumped down, I would guess. But we don't really need to. I don't know. I guess we can try jump. Or the amulet. Why not? Oh. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Sorry. Nah, here we go. Uh, hold up amulet. I only stood you as far as wanting to hold the ceiling. What? I guess just... Or show amulet to creature, probably. The creature doesn't seem remotely interested. 
The little boy's face opens its mouth and lets forth a horrible wa wailing squall. Wait, little boy. Oh, that's right. They did say it was a child's face in the mouth. Oh, is this William? That would explain why they said it was the dog skeleton that we had. So they just... They faked the death? Maybe it's not so bad Dr. Rebus died after all. He was supposed to kill William. Oh, wait a minute. But Oh, I see. He was supposed to kill William because Croesus told him because William was all, like, fucked up. But then I guess he didn't because he wanted... Because Anna didn't want him to kill him. Right. So I guess they killed a dog instead, faked his death, put the uh, put the dog uh, in the in William's coffin. But then the question is, what was William doing all for all these decades? I don't know. That's the question. The creepy toy from Toy Story that Sid created. Oh, <laughs> the spider legs. Yes, yes, I remember that. The stuff of your nightmares. Jeez. Okay, a frightened infant calling for its mother. Oh, in that case, we need to give you the locket. I think you had the gold locket had the picture of the woman? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Show gold, or g just, get, just give it to him. Give gold locket to creature. What? Your hands are full. With a quickness you never would have suspected in something so big, the creature lunges at you. There is no time to run. Thick, ropey tendrils wrap themselves around your neck and lift you off the ground, and the little boy's face presses against yours breathing its raspy, fetid breath into your mouth. And then the biting begins. So my hands were full, so I never actually... I, it was another action to take the locket. So we died. So if we just take the locket here, just so it's ready... My hands are still full. What are my hands full with? Oh, because I'm wearing the robe. Right, right. I see. And I have the... I gotcha. Do we dare remove the robe now? Why not? Wear a trench coat. We don't need to be in disguise at the moment. Take gold locket. <laughs> I am full of it. Hey, Matt, how are you? Uh, okay. Try this again. Give gold locket to creature. You toss the gold locket at the monster's feet and it lands face up on the cobblestones, revealing the woman's portrait inside. The creature looks down and is in immediately captivated. It bends over awkwardly, delicately grasps the chain with the tip of one tentacle and holds the locket up to its face. For a single heartbeat of time, even the storm seems to hold still. The little boy's face gazes at the picture in the locket for a long, aching moment and a silent tear rolls up in the corner of its eye and trickles down its cheek. The monster ignores you for the moment, fascinated by the portrait of its mother. Yep, so remember that was the locket it had in the, um, in the, uh, in the attic, the attic cell. So I guess that means we can just move on past, unless we have some way of killing it. Probably not. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking of killing it VDR, but I don't think we really have any weapons. Loot. <laughs> we can give it the William Skull, which really turns out... I guess we have the Meat Hook. It's probably going to result in a death, but I guess we could try it. Um, kill creature or monster with Meat Hook. It's really just a stab. It's probably too big for that. With a hoarse yell of desperation, you raise the meat hook over your head and fly at the monster, while its attention is absorbed by the tiny picture of its mother. It never even sees you coming. With brutal accuracy, you sink the meat hook deep into the left eye of the little boy's face. It screams a high, squalling wail like a frightened infant, and a thick black ichor spurts from the wound. It thrashes about helplessly, knocking you onto the ground, and you scramble back on your hands and feet crab-style, trying to get away from its struggles. Another flash of lightning, and you see the thing stagger over to the side of the bridge. One tentacle manages to pluck out the hook, which clatters to the pavement, but the damage has been done. The monster hits the stone parapet, overbalances, and goes over the side, taking the locket with it. It hits the water with a giant splash and is instantly engulfed by the raging current. By the time you get to your feet, rush to the side and look over, the monster's body is gone. 
The clouds overhead mutter restlessly to themselves. Your score has just gone up by two points. So, yeah, okay, we did kill it. Sorry, we were meanie. Yes. Twas beauty that killed the beast. <laughs> Yeah, it did work out. I was, I was, deba I was debating whether should we try to kill it or should we just try to use the moment to move past it. And I was thinking, oh well, we don't have any weapons to kill it. But then I just did a scroll of the inventory. I'm like, well, we do have the meat hook. I'm like, that's the closest thing we have to like a knife or any sort of weapon. And what do you know? That worked. How about that? All right, so let's save. Uh, Sixty-four. R.I.P. William. Yeah. I guess here's a question for you, Materian, and for everyone. Would you rather die wishing you had your mommy? Or would you rather die while jerking off to the porno Mac? <laughs> As Chuck did. <laughs> Poor Chuck. Uh, thinking of your mother <laughs> or thinking of uh, uh, something, uh, someone else. All right. Because <laughs> it, it happened, both scenarios happened in the game. It's I th I feel like it's a valid question, so don't judge me. <laughs> All right, I know. Yeah, the monster didn't ask for it. I know. We got to be fair. He did go out doing what he loved, while William went out thinking about who he loved. So doing or thinking, which which is better? I don't know. Oh yeah, I hope not both. God, God, not. I hope not both. All right. Uh, so we're trying to make it over to the lighthouse. Narrow street. There's nothing going on here. Um, got clouds. Uh oh. A group of cultists passes you heading north from the town. Uh oh. <laughs> One of them recognizes you and shouts to the others. You try to run, but within moments they are everywhere, swarming over the heath and pouring out of the streets of the town. They grab you from every side, yada yada yada, and kill you. Okay. So, yeah, we gotta change back into the robe, I guess. I guess. Um, remove trench coat, wear the robe, and then go north. The cult is thinking we're one of their own pass by silently. Very good. Yes, that's right, Rex. Do what you love or thinking about what you love, or who you love. Well, he seemed to live, it was kind of consoling him a bit, material, and he was kind of humanizing him a little bit in his final moments. Which actually reminds me of um, this weekend I uh, saw Blade Runner for the first time about 10 years. I didn't really remember the movie very well and I wanted to see the original before uh, seeing you know, Blade Runner 2049. And it kind of, this, you know, talking about this reminds me of um, Roy the Replicon. Sort of, even though he's not human, he sort of humanizes himself there at the uh, toward the end. Okay. Um, yeah, I made the huge mistake too. Uh, it was the theatrical cut. I really, I've, I've not seen the director's cut nor the final cut, and I really want to see both. So I'm probably going to do that as well. I, I, I've seen the theatrical cut now twice. Exactly, Cal. Exactly. Oh, the original short story? No, I haven't. I have not, Peter. Nope. So yeah, sorry, sorry. I, I, I realized I was sort of entering into spoilers, so I, I got vague there towards the end. So don't worry, I didn't spoil much. Yeah, the one with the voiceover. I know, which is the worst one. All right. So let's pass by them. Uh, the, the sea thrashes against the shore with storm-driven fury. Okay, let's save here again. Uh, 64 lighthouse. Unlock door. I guess we gotta probably change first. Maybe? Actually, we might still have to be carrying the keys. Yep, you unlock the massive bronze door, open it. With great effort, you manage to pull the ancient creaking door open a few inches, enough to slip through. The east, bottom of the lighthouse. Okay, nothing going on there. Go up to the top of the lighthouse. Sitting in the middle of the room, uh, beneath a large hexagonal skylight, is the most bizarre, incomprehensibly complicated device you have ever seen. Let's check out this device. Oh no, uh, both Knox and Cow have been around a while. 
It looks a bit like a telescope, a bit like a microwave oven turned inside out, and a bit like the industrial laser, laser from Goldfinger. It's pointed almost straight up, right through the skylight, aimed directly at the rumbling hole in the sky. It exact, its exact purpose is unfathomable, but it is emitting an ominous throbbing hum and radiating a curious warmth that causes an unwholesome prickling sensation all over your skin. Most of the exposed components are too complex to comprehend, but there is a receptacle about two-thirds of the way along the thing's er, barrel that contains a round mirror, like a focusing mirror, in a telescope. It's as though you could remove it. Indeed. Wait a minute, what's the mirror that we have? Oh, you know what I bet they did? Hang on, what mirrors do we have? Sudden flash of lightning from outside momentarily etches the room in sharp black and white contrast. Okay, let's. I want to see what's in our trench coat here. Where the trench coat? Okay, what's? What are our, mir our mirrors? Which ones do we have? We have four. Th oh, we do have all four. So which one is in there? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, dev device again. Contains a round mirror. Okay. Uh, real mirror? <laughs> okay. You can't tell much about the mirror while it's inside the device. Alright, so just take the real mirror. The receptacle lets go of the mirror with a metallic click and a pneumatic hiss. Well, well, if it isn't the loyal wife. You whirl around to find Michael standing in the doorway, flanked by two robed guards who stare at you with a distinct glitter of malice in their eyes. Shit. Can we undo that and, um, let's take all the mirrors. I think there are only two that are of consequence. Because remember the blueprints changed them? So maybe whatever the mirror three is, we probably don't want the, the accurate one. We probably want the inaccurate one, which would be, I guess, any of the other three. So here's what we're going to do. Let's take mirror two and mirror three. And then let's also change from the robe to the, or the trench coat to the robe. I think that's what we want to do. So right now we have two mirrors, numbers two and three, the amulet and the hooded robe. That sounds good. Uh, so remove trench coat and wear the robe. Okay. Now let's try to take the round I guess save again. Now let's take the real mirror. Oh, my hands are full. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Alright, so we probably... What do we have in our hands? Two mirrors, an amulet, and the trench coat. So probably the amulet's not going to be as helpful here. Probably not. So remove robe, wear trench coat. Put amulet in coat. Okay. Remove trench coat. Wear the robe. Save. I mean, they're still probably going to make us, but may as well try. Okay, now take the round or real mirror. It's Melloscope? Oh, you just didn't see them together to make the connection. Got it, Rex. Oh, you, so by now you mean at the present moment. Got it. Currently. Did Phil Dick, uh, Philip K. Dick also do the um, story behind Minority Report? I think he did, didn't he? All right, take the real mirror. Okay, so it doesn't matter what we're wearing, Michael still made us. Um, okay, you got two rope guards, a sudden flash of lightning. Probably you got to move quickly and put in the other mirror or something, I would guess, but... Uh, can we get a measurement on this real mirror before we die? Put real mirror in calipers. Oh, we're wearing the robe, aren't we? Shit. All right, let's at least get it. Hang on. Yes, <laughs> we got to restore since the robe didn't matter. All right, remove robe. Wear the trench coat. Take the calipers. Now save. And now um, take the real mirror. Okay, he did do that one as well. Nice. I really, yeah, I really like that movie. 
Okay, so now put real mirror in. Oh shit, we slipped mirror two. Damn it. In calipers. The instrument holds the mirror delicately clamped between its pincers. The readout is 0 0.149. Okay, so it's the same as mirror three, which makes sense. So it's mirror three slash real mirror. So we need to definitely swap it in with something else. Michael smirks as he advances on you. You're quite a persistent little tart, aren't you? Quite the gutsy little irritant. I suppose Michael must have been one of those modern men. Didn't go in for the submissive type. Michael, or whatever fiend is speaking from behind Michael's face, sneers. Didn't have the bones for it is my guess. In my day, we know how to keep our wives. A headstrong woman should be broken in, just like a headstrong horse. You cheeky bastard. All right, um, can we just say put mirror two in receptacle? Don't touch that, says Michael, pushing you sharply back. Michael walks past you and runs his fingers along the strange device. My, 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 you do keep busy, Michael remarks when he finds the focusing mirror missing. It's a good thing I caught you in time. He turns to you and holds out his hand. Your little game is over now, woman, and you've lost. Give me the mirror now. All right, now we give him the decoy. Let's give him mirror two. <laughs> this is what I wanted to do. Give mirror two. Well, actually, we could see the death if we gave him the real mirror. It's probably worth checking out. What do you think? Let's see that. Uh, 64. Uh, Michael Michael's mirrors. Give real mirror to Michael. That's more like it, Michael says. Michael pauses, glances down at the mirror in his hand, then smirks at you. But of course, there's no telling where else you've been poking around, what you might have gotten your dirty little hands on, hmm? He leans in close to you, and you can smell corruption on his breath like rotting oranges. I've been wondering where this had gotten off to, he murmurs in your ear, taking the caliper-like instrument from you. He applies to the instrument to the mirror and frowns as he checks the readout. And he smiles. Oh, so we don't. So we actually want to give him mirror three then. So it passes the caliper test, but is not actually the real mirror because I guess there's some other property which makes it not the real one that's needed. Well, that's that then, he says, placing the mirror back in its receptacle. He nods towards the guards who sees you and begin dragging you down the stairs. It's time to clue you in to just what's been going on around here, Michael says, following behind you. First hand, I think you'll find it quite enthralling. You are dragged bodily down to the foot of the lighthouse and around to the rocky outcropping, where an island of flesh floats just beyond the breakwater's tip. The guards shove their way through the crowds of robed supplicants, carrying you to the island's center. They force you to your knees, and despite your best efforts at escape, Man handled you into a pair of handcuffs looped through an iron ring set in a heavy stone block. The block is so low you are forced to remain kneeling in the squelchy muck, craning your neck to watch the orgiastic ceremony taking place. And your husband, no, you tell yourself, not your husband, the creature that your husband has become, leading the terrible rites. Warning, Atchin called with object zero, PC equals 26, BD9. We'll ignore further occurrences. Island of Flesh. So that's about over here. The island of is barely 40 feet across, its surface covered with an ankle-deep layer of slime and muck. Underneath the muck, the ground throbs, ha heaving rhythmically to a blasphemous living pulse. The sea thrashes against the shore with storm-driven fury. The robe guards hover to either side of you, waiting for you to make a move. Michael stands in the center of it all, leading the hellish rites. Robed cultists crowd around on every side, some of them brandishing flaming torches, some of them chanting in some hideous archaic tongue, all of them swaying to the hypnotic pulse that rises up from the depths of the fleshy ground. You are handcuffed to one of several heavy stone blocks set in a rough semicircle around the center of the island. Lashed to a stake in the center of the island is a young boy. Oh, it's probably Jeffrey Greer. Yep. So shit, we're not dead yet. I was hoping we'd be dead. Because I don't want... 
all the, I mean, probably it's only going to be a few more moves. So we may as well just take a look around, get the death, and then restore back to when we can um, give him the, the decoy mirror. How's it going, Tapped? Yeah, this could be towards the end. We'll see. A skinny, tow-headed boy of eight or so, he bears all the markings of a recent victim of trauma. His face is smudged with dirt, his wrists are raw and red from the tight bindings, and his eyes are shadowed with deep, purple half-circles. For all this, however, you instantly recognize his face from the newspaper story. It's Jeffrey Greer, the man who was kidnapped two days ago. And there's also a stake. The wood piled around the base of the stake and the leather thongs knotted firmly near the top make it gruesomely clear that this is no campfire, it's a sacrificial pyre. Michael takes up a torch from one of the crowd. Holding it high above his head, he turns to the lighthouse and intones, Yach! That which may not be named, I call upon thee! Formless drifter of the gulps between, I summon thee! The crowd murmurs in ecstatic encouragement. Oh, Frab just stay, Kalukale. <laughs> yeah, it did, Matt, didn't it? It did. Uh, Alright, let's take a look at Michael. He is someone else now, someone you have never known and would never want to know. His flesh is gaunt, his skin waxy and pale, his forehead burning and feverish, and his eyes. You can't bear to look into the seething badness of those wild, red-rimmed eyes. Your husband is gone now. Some other alien force has devoured him from within, and now animates his body. I cast aside the seals, I throw open the gates. Michael traces a mystic sigil in the air in front of him with the flaming torch. The flames seem to hang for a moment in strange patterns before twisting away into nothing. Ahodos, Sias, Abyssin, Abyssin. The torch flares up with a roar and the ocean waves seem to respond with sudden, inexplicable fury, crashing brutally against the island. Okay, can we do anything with the block? The stone is roughly cubical, nearly a foot long on each side. There is a thick iron ring embedded in one side which you are securely handcuffed to. Michael turns his back on the lighthouse facing out to sea. To the east where the spawning chaos seethes and separates within the crucible of Grum, from whose burning pustules arise the million unseeable forms, I summon thee. How do we think we're going to be doing this, by the way? Is it, is it just if you put in the right, the wrong mirror? Probably not. There's probably something else we need to do. Because otherwise they wouldn't give us all this opportunity to do shit. So we, we're handcuffed to a ring, right? So we could apply fish oil to slip out of the handcuffs, maybe? Well, if we could even access the fish oil. Uh, yeah, I'm not... Do we, oh, did we not... Did we drop the meat hook? We might have. And nothing else is really... I guess we have the glass shard, but that's not going to do much on the handcuffs. Needle. Oh, we do have the amulet. Can we take the am or wear the amulet, maybe? A booted foot slams cruelly into your ribs. Keep still, bitch! Snarls the guard. Michael makes a quarter turn to his left. To the north, where the howling hunger sweeps invisibly across the yellow plains and gnaws upon the entrails of the pious, I summon thee! A monstrous bolt of lightning licks down from the sky and strikes the sea just north of the island sending a spume of steam and boiling water 50 feet into the shrieking sky. Screams of fear and rapture erupt throughout the pressing crowd, almost inaudible beneath the deafening peal of thunder. The boy cries pitifully, his sobs going unheeded by the chanting cultists in the raging storm. Ask boy about bear. A heavy fist... Okay, we have to keep, keep silent pitch now. Michael isn't even phased. He makes a half turn to the right and continues. To the south, where the seven corpulent sultans of Slastha stand in judgment over the her heretics of Kran and force their vile copulations upon the repentant, I summon thee. Another lightning bolt, this time striking just south of the island in another spume of water. The crowd begins to writhe and 
gibber madly like a single plasmic organ organism. Lovely, lovely. We can't do anything with the amulet? Jeez. So probably we have to wear the amulet even before we get here, I guess. Yeah, probably. How are we going to rescue what's-his-face, though? Here. Open t Nothing we can do is going to do anything. Yep. Michael makes a three-quarter turn to his left, coming all the way around to face the lighthouse once more. To the ultimate west, wherein lies the void that conquers all, I summon thee. The top of the lighthouse begins to glow with an unwholesome violet light. A low, ominous vibration creeps up from the ground, crawling up through your bones and reverberating painfully in your teeth. Uh, remove handcuffs. You'll have to find a way to unlock them first. Oh, with the needle. Okay. The air around the lighthouse is rippling now. Several cultists fall convulsing to the mud. Others are screaming in strange, strangled tongues. The earth shakes and the air is split by a high-pitched harmonic ringing like a crystal about to shatter. Michael raises the torch, preparing to thrust it into the pyre at the child's feet. He throws his head back and shrinks directly into the eye of the storm. Ayach, Payaf Zeno Bethakal Thalkless, Lutuk Fathagan, by the keys of Aik Sotat, I name thee. Ayaldabaloth, come forth. Sorry, Rufus, didn't mean to scare you, buddy. It's okay. We'll find a way to be Ayaldabaloth and Croesus. Cro Croesus? Croesus. Croesters. Um, all right. Uh, pick handcuffs with needle. Oh, we still have to keep... Oh, we got to take the needle first. Shoot. With a triumphant shout, Michael plunges the torch into the kindling piled up around the little boy's feet. You turn away as the child screams rise over the sound of crackling flames. The ringing sound reaches a crescendo. The sky spits like a rotted shroud, and the squirming, bubbling chaos of Ayad by Olaf pours through. The earth rot withers under the unspeakable malevolence of its great red-rimmed eye, and all of mankind are engulfed and insisted within the necrotic folds of the womb of Nihilum. It is a dark time for everyone. Mankind's doom is complete. In that game, you scored 64 out of a possible 100 points. It is, however, all for naught. You have died. <laughs> An orgy or a porn? Oh, man. Yeah. So Michael's mirrors. Okay, so a few things we could do. One is we put in the wrong mirror. Two, we got to pick that lock. And then also we need to, I guess, be carrying the... We don't care about the robe, so we should remove the robe. Oh. Oh shit, okay, this is the wrong save. When I, one more save. We gotta get ready. So remove the robe. Okay, we're not wearing it. We wanna make sure that we're, we're carrying the needle. And we're gonna be taking the real mirror, but we also need to make sure we're carrying um, the, the, the dupe, which is mirror three, like the clone. So it'll pass, it'll pass the calipers test, but it won't be the real mirror. So that, we need mirror three. We already have that. Okay, we're carrying that. Um, what else do we need? We got the needle, the calipers, mirror label three, and the robe. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think. Do we need the tin? Probably not. So if the needle, if the needle can pick the lock of the handcuffs, we're still going to have to find some way. Oh, we need the amulet. That's right. We need the amulet. I think. Okay. So take the amulet as well. In fact, can we even wear the amulet? You slip the amulet around your neck and drop it inside your shirt. Okay, that's good. I'll give us maybe some protection. So the rest of this, I'm not quite sure. We're going to have to find some way to free Jeffrey Greer, of course, but we're going to have bigger problems because we're going to be surrounded by that whole crew. So let's save it again here. And then now we take the real mirror. Okay, Michael comes in. Uh, let's check out the guards. Or let, let's actually talk to Michael. Can we talk to him? I asked Michael about himself. Oh, Michael. I've no patience for your chatter, woman. Michael snarls. Is there a way to block notifications? 
Oh, you mean mobile only, but not like his notifications in general at large? Yeah, that I don't know. You can obviously turn it off for people, but I'm guessing whatever changes you make in the app will cascade to desktop too. It means back on the bed, your boys. Oh man. Okay. So let's look at the uh, guards. The guards eye you with malice and a certain hunger, as if they were just waiting for an excuse to tear you to pieces. All right, now we're gonna give mirror three to Michael. Okay, so he he looks at the calipers. Okay, so it looks like that, that passed the test. We go to the Island of Flesh. We got flaming torches, we're handcuffed to the blocks, rough semicircle round. And we got Jeffrey here. Okay, so let's do a save here. 64 Island of Flesh. And can we pick handcuffs with the needle? No, we can't. Keep still. So if we can't do anything, we can't do any action. I guess we just wait for Michael to do his shit. And with the wrong mirror, stuff will go bad, and then we'll find out what happens. But it looks like we can't do any action. Uh, unless we can talk to a guard about the guard. You can't think of anything to say about that. Okay. Ask guard about uh, Michael. Yeah, keep silent. Okay, I guess we can't do anything. So let's let him do all of his um, thing. Can we look at the sigil, by the way? Can't see any such thing. Torch, was it? Uh, burning torch with a flashlight. I mean the burning torch. The torch's flames lick the air hungrily. Eh. Alright, so let's just wait through his thing to the south. The ultimate west. So what happens? We've now got the wrong mirror in there. What happens? Ialda ba Ialda little buff come forth. Can we pick the handcuffs now? No, still not. Wait, what? We still died? Oh shit. So mirror three may not have been the real mirror, but it may well have just have been because it had the, I guess since it had the same properties, it still killed everybody. So it still worked for them. All right, so instead of mirror three, we're gonna have to do something else. I mean, we could just try a bad mirror. Now remember they crossed out 113 to do 149. We've done both 149s, and we've both died both times. So do we want to try mirror one, because it'll be sort of close? But it probably won't pass muster with Michael, I would imagine. So let's just see what happens this time around. Give mirror one to Michael. So he's going to measure what's at the calipers. It's going to be off by 0 .0006. He frowns as he checks the readout. This is not the mirror, correct mirror, of course, Michael says, putting away. You're beginning to bore me, woman. Give me the real mirror now. Huh. All right, so that's not going to work out. Um, what if we don't? Uh, they probably just kill us. It would be a different death, I suppose. Give mirror two to Michael. Okay, that <laughs> didn't work either. Give mirror four to Michael. We do nothing. With a s time passes. With a sudden vicious snarl of hatred, Michael lunges for you forward and grabs you, shaking you brutally. The mirror, you insolent bitch! He roars. Give it to me, damn you! Without waiting for your answer, he whirls you around and slams you against the side of the device. A metal flange cuts deep into your lower back and you scream in pain. I'll make you scream, you'll scream your throat to bloody tatters! Michael gloats. And with a sudden surge of strength, he bends you backward over the painfully angled device. Something snaps in your back. A sickening numbness watches over your legs like warm, viscous water. Michael pulls you off the device. The flange makes a horrible sucking noise as it comes out of your back. Spins you once more and sends you hurtling across the room into one of the great floor-to-ceiling windows. Glass cracks and shatters outward, and the next instant you are plummeting to earth surrounded by a rain of glittering shards. 
The last sight you see before striking the jagged rocks below is the top of the lighthouse rushing away from you and your husband's face looking down after you, his mouth stretched open in a demonic fit of laughter, his mad alien eyes rimmed with red. You have died. Okay, so. Interesting. So, long story short, <laughs> demand divorce. Um... We're going to have to... There are two things we could do. One is we... Well, first of all, let's get a better look at these mirrors. So they're all perfectly round and exquisitely polished, very slightly concave, starting the edges of the... as you stare into it. I think they all have the same description, so they just have different labels. Can we remove a label? Probably not. Not worrying. Um... Either we have, it sounds like we have to make sure, here's the, here's the quandary. We could adjust the mirrors to match, maybe f some way we find a way, to have the calipers measure it at 149. But if we're doing that, as we just saw with mirror three, it still works. So my sense is if we have to recalibrate the calipers such that he thinks like mirror one, despite it being 144, if the, cal if the, if the reading comes out as 149, that's what we're interested to. So maybe there's a way we can change not the mirrors, but the calipers, and then give him mirror one, which is close to mirror three. You know, 144 is only six away from 149. So the calipers are made of stainless steel, molded in a strangely flowing, almost organic design. The calipers, if that is what they are, resemble no other tool you've ever seen. As three independently adjustable arms, each ending in a needle point pincer, which fold back on themselves at grotesque asymmetrical angles toward a floating center point. There's okay, yeah, calibrated readout set near the base, which presumably provides a measure of whatever strange contortion of space is occupied by whatever object is placed between the pincers at the tool's other end. There's a way we can change that readout uncalibrated or something. Okay, that's the same thing. Um, uncalibrate calipers? It's not a verb I recognize. Recalibrate. Calipers. Yeah. Uh, change calipers. Manipulate calipers. Damn. Calibrated readout. How do we. Maybe we have to move pincer? No, probably not. There are arms. Whoops, not piner. Nothing obvious happens. Okay, it's the same as the calipers. We need something that's not arms. No, it's the same thing. Move arms. Damn it. How do we, like... Maybe this is not what we have to do, but... Clearly, the mirrors 1, 2, and 4 aren't going to do us any good. Maybe we just ditch the caliper so we can't even confirm it. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> let's just get rid of... Like, let's. We don't need the calipers. Ah. Okay, he... Even leaving, we get caught. So we got to go to back to R.I.P. William. Um, throw calipers into uh, river. The caliper strikes the water with a splash and disappears from view. Okay, let's try that. If he can't measure it, he won't know, right? That's my thinking. Oh, wrong way. Breakwater. Okay, we need to remove the robe. Oh, sorry. Um, unlock door. Okay, enter lighthouse. All right, what do we need again? We need to wear the amulet. We need to, I guess the mirror doesn't really matter. And I guess also take the needle, we want that ready. All right, go up. All right, save it again here. Let's try this. Uh, 64, lighthouse, no calipers. Yeah, if we can't change the calipers, just not have the calipers at all. My thinking. Take real mirror. Okay, he's here. We wait for him to ask for it. Give mirror. Oh, might as well give mirror one. It's close enough, but it's not right. To Michael. Okay. My spies tell me you tried to destroy one of my expensive tools, Michael says. 
That is very, very irresponsible of you, I must say. It's the, a good thing I keep a spare handy... Ah, oh, fuck. He draws a duplicate set of calipers from his pocket. He applies the instrument to the mirror and frowns as he checks the readout. Ah. Uh. Alright, it was a good idea, but they had an answer for us. Damn it. Damn it. Replacement calipers. Ah. Uh. Alright, so... Throwing away the calipers won't do us any good. Yes, I think we do need to somehow change the ones we do have. Yeah, it's pretty trolly, isn't it? Whoops. Oh, I tried to restore and I put remove instead and we died. Okay. So, we're back to the lighthouse then. Uh, so we do need to find some way to change the calipers that we do have. How are we going to do that? Um... I guess we could like hit hit it with something or I don't think we have the meat hook anymore, do we? By the way, yeah, when we were on the bridge, could we get the meat hook back or did it go over the side with uh, William? Take meat hook. Oh no, we we were able to take it, okay. Fair enough. Um Shouldn't we be I thought we had a change into the road. Could be wrong. Where? Do we need to put this on the train tracks to destroy? Oh no, he'll probably just say, oh, you tried to destroy it again or something. Oh. Alright. Do we? Okay, yeah, I guess we didn't have to worry about the crowd. No, we don't. Alright. Breakwater. Alright, so let's try to figure out what, what can we do to the calipers? to change them, manipulate them. Uh, I don't know. Lantern matches needle. Maybe we can add the needle to the caliper somehow? And like obscure the actual, the actual needle or something? Oh, we do have that blueprint, that's right. Yeah, maybe we should check out that blueprint again. Maybe. Uh, technical schematic. Yep, it's the same thing. Complicated arrangements of lenses and mirrors. Okay. So, yeah, this is just to tell you the thing. Alright, that's not going to tell us anything new then. Oh, maybe we should have... We found some way to erase that. Maybe we should have given him the blueprints that say, like, hey, it should have been 113. Maybe we have to replace the blueprints or something. Yeah, it's probably too much. Okay. Um, put needle in calipers. The caliper-like instrument wasn't designed to measure the crusty needle. It won't fit properly between the pencils. Yeah. All right, we're going to have to figure this. This might be tricky. Yeah, I think there was a memo. We'll check it out. Alright, why isn't this loading? There we go. Uh, tack, another... Th wait. Didn't you buy three for Bedlam already? Today? Tack? No, no, you didn't, I guess. You didn't. That's right, that was last night because you just came in late today. Okay, cool. Uh, Slashing Dirt bedlam, bedlam is at a Microsoft Adventure, a Poisonous King, and Inca up to R2. Quite the battle going on here on the raffle queue. We have Rex, another slot for Are You Afraid of the Dark, and Knox for Are You Afraid, or no, sorry, Matt for Are You Afraid of the Knox. Uh. I ain't afraid of no cow. So that moves ahead of Dylan Dog and will kill a poisonous Shinara up to uh, V5. And Critical. Hey, Critical. One for Bad Mojo. That also moves ahead of a po uh, poisonous Shinara up to, uh, well, stays in at V4. Uh, good luck with that material. How, how many? 
27 king lead there. Miria won for Chin. Tomb of the Middle Kingdom moves ahead of Homie to Clown to be 12. And Moth, 3 for Bad Mojo. Is that a Once Upon a Forest, Bloodnet, and a Poisonous Shinar up to V2? Cedric Wars continue. Alright, guys, I'm going to quickly go get a um, refill of water here, so I'll uh, be right back. Uh, uh, Bizer Silicon. Okay, zoom here. Uh, I don't think there are any more buys, right? We're good? Yeah, we're good, cool. All right, let's turn off uh, slots. Probably yeah, the last of the day. Yeah the, yeah, the PC speaker rescued you guys from that one. All right, we'll have to confront that at some point though. Okay, um, yeah, I need to look at the calipers again to get a better sense for how, what to do here. So three independently adjustable arms, they each have a, ne oh, a needle point pincer, okay. They don't have a needle on them. I thought there was a needle with the readout or something, like, kind of like a, a meter. Floating center point near the base point about two inches long very old and crusted with what looks like dried blood oh that's the needle the point is worn down but still sharp base no shut 
Did Tack get the sub Cedrix? Um, did ta did the uh, did tax notification? Oh, Wolfenstein! Thanks very much for the follow. Welcome to the Das Adventure Quest. Uh, Tack, did you share your um, the uh, resub message in chat? Because it only works if you do it in chat. I don't think I saw it come across, at least while the stream has been active. I can check on the records here to see if it happened, but th thank you. Thank you again for, for the sub and support. Um, no, it didn't say it didn't say that you resubbed. Uh, it said that you subbed on the 17th, so I don't even think it's necessarily up for renewal yet. So if you don't see that, um, like anniversary, it's not really an anniversary, a month, month, <laughs> month anniversary, whatever. And I, don't, I think you're, it said you um, subbed on the 17th of February, so it'd have to be, I'm guessing, the 17th of March to get that message. Yeah, so I don't think it's I don't think it's ready yet. You got to wait to the seventeenth, and you'll see you'll see it'll come up. Uh, there'll be oh, oh that was my mouse pointer. Uh, there'll be um, you'll see in in the in the chat room it'll give you the option to share the month of first and that what's tr that's what triggers the uh, automated Cedric's being given. All right, so um, we looked at that. That didn't do anything. Yeah, there was the memo. So let's check out the memo. I uh, notice all brethren. Oh, they got to be kept clean. Yeah. All right, can cause dangerous instability in the refraction patterns. Ionization treatment. All right, so we can rub like dirt on this or something. All right, so we don't have to change the calibration then. So when we take the real mirror, we don't have time to dirty it. So yeah, we got to I think we still have to use mirror 3. We just have to find some way to get some crap on it. What sort of crap could we apply to it? Maybe we could scratch it? Scratch mirror three with needle? Can't seem to make a scratch on the slick metallic surface. Oh. All right. Um, yeah, so you probably have to smudge it. Rub mirror three. You polish the mirror with your... No, I don't want to polish it. I want to do the opposite of that. All right, we need some like... Uh, oh, if only I had the coffee or something have that anymore. Any way to get like dirt or something? Broom we don't have. Oh the fish oil? Open tin. Oh there it is, you found it. Tech, thanks very much for the two months. Two months from tech. Found the resub button. Thank you so much, Tech, for the continued support. There you go. Yeah, I'm surprised because I thought it wasn't going to come up to the uh, 17th. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know how it all works. It's it's weird. It seems a little bit variable and unpredictable. Thank you again, Tech. Uh, I think we were opening up the tin, right? It's already open. Uh, take oil. Okay. Put oil on mirror three. You have to remove it from the trench coat first. Take mirror three. Put oil on mirror three. Uh, you rub a small bit of fish oil onto the reflective surface of the mirror, leaving a barely perceptible smear. There we go. Okay, so the fish oil comes in handy again. Yeah, okay, yep. Official chat client. Makes sense, makes sense. All right, so hopefully this will work. Uh, do we have what el whatever else we need? I don't remember whether we did that. No, we didn't. Okay, so we're wearing the amulet, and then we also want to get the needle ready. And do we need anything else? I don't know. Probably, I guess we're good for now. So let's do another lighthouse save. Uh, oh, got to unlock the door, of course. Open door. Let's make sure, what are we carrying? Amulet, trench coat. Oh, we're wearing that, okay. We have the key ring, needle, mirror, robe. Oh, we're wearing the amulet, got it. All right, fine. fair enough. Oops. Uh, east. Uh, save. Alright. And then take real mirror. 
<laughs> shotgun and grenades. All right, so here's Michael. We're gonna wait for him to ask us for the. Uh, we're gonna give him your three. Give mirror three to Michael. Okay, so caliper test is correct. All right. He put it in, he didn't notice the smear of the fish oil. And we're back on the island of flesh. Let's see, and I don't think we can pick the lock, the handcuffs, with uh, the needle. Because we got to keep still because we're a bitch, apparently. Uh, handcuffs. They're ordinary police issue. Handcuffs, the cuffs are closed. Open the handcuffs. <laughs> Open the cuffs. No, we got to keep still. All right. So we'll just wait until he does his thing to the east, to the north, to the south, the ultimate west. Do we die or not? Hello, the beloved, come forth. Pick cuffs with needle. Can we take this moment when everyone's like looking at this? What happens next is rather unexpected. The high pitch rigging sound reaches a crescendo, and without warning, the upper half of the lighthouse explodes violently in a boiling fireball of violent flames. For a moment, Michael's lunatic grin of triumph remains frozen in place, licked by the purple radiance, not yet cognizant that the ritual has gone wrong. In the next instant, however, he is stricken. The mirror! He whispers hoarsely. Bits of burning debris are raining down on the island. The cultists fall back in panic and start pushing at each other to get off the island and escape. Many are pushed off into the water, where clusters of ropey, jellyfish-like tentacles immediately drag them screaming beneath the waves. A burning chunk of masonry strikes one of the gu your guards in the head, and he drops to the mud next to you with a mass of chewed spaghetti pulp where his face used to be. The other guard takes a quick, frightened look around, then bolts without a backward glance. Come back! screams Michael. Come back, cowards! But no one heeds him. With a strangled curse, he turns and hurls the torch into the sea. Your score has gone up by five points. We're up to 69. Oh, right. Very nice. 69 in the Island of Flesh. Flesh. Okay, can we pick the lock now? Pick cuffs with needle. The metal cuffs ba bite painfully into your wrist, but with a little bit of excruciating contortion, you manage to insert the end of the needle into the keyhole. For what seems like endless minutes, you jiggle the needle fruitlessly around, biting your lip against the cramps that keep trying to seize your painfully bent hands and bitterly reflecting that Linda Hamilton makes it look deceptively easy on the big screen. And suddenly the cuff snaps open. Quickly you free your other wrist and the handcuffs slide free, landing in the muck. The horrible fleshy ground shudders beneath you. Bubbles begin to boil up around the island's edges. You! Michael snarls at you, his voice a barely intelligible, intelligible choke. The malice pouring out of his expression it is almost more than you can bear to look at it. If I had the time, I'd gut you right here and now. Suddenly, the ground lurches slightly in Michael smiles. But perhaps I won't need to. With a mocking bow, he strides past you and hops over to the shore. I'm sorry I can't stay around to watch you die, he calls over his shoulder but I have some rather urgent business to attend to. The next moment he is gone, running down the breakwater toward town. The boy cries pitifully, his sobs going unheeded by the chanting cultists and the raging storm. All right, can we just uh, re rescue Jeffrey? Uh, probably, yeah, yeah, rescue Jeffrey. That's not a verb I recognize, free Jeffrey. Quickly, you untie the bonds holding the boy to the stake. As his hands slip free, he jumps away from you and eyes you warily. Then, sniffing and rubbing his arms, he runs to the edge of the island, hops over onto the breakwater, and starts sprinting home. The boiling is becoming more violent. You also notice that the tide seems to be striking the island a bit higher than before, even though the waves themselves aren't getting any taller. Your score has gone up by another five points. How about this? 
All right, so um, let's save because I think we want to see what a death here looks like. So let's just wait, see what happens, and take the death. You wait helplessly. The island is definitely sinking now. Actually, can we take the handcuffs? Yes, you can. Uh, not much time left. The water is lapping almost to the island center, and the gap between the island and the rocky spur is nearly too wide to jump across. It's raining in Cedric's. Um, is there anything else here that we would want to take the stake? That's hardly portable. With a final shivering heave, the island of flesh sinks beneath the waves, taking you along with it. The vicious undertow drags you under instantly. Brine fills your mouth and nostrils. You have precious little time to drown, however, before the gelatinous tendrils from below snake around your throat and ankles, pulling you down to a fate far worse. You have died. Indeed. This is your darkest hour. Okay, so that was just intentional just to see that. So let's say, yeah, let's just take the handcuffs and then um, a jump to the breakwater. You jump on the spot fruitlessly. No. Go west. Okay, you hop across the waterfall gap. There we go. Hey, how's it going, ghost? How are you doing, sir? Uh, small outcropping of stone, right? Okay, the rocky spur. Um, beyond the breakwater's tip, where before there was only a patch of oddly turbulent water, a small island has risen from the sea. It is quickly sinking back into the churning waters. So you can go here, but this is more like a dotted. Not much time left. The water is lapping up to the island center. All right, well, we already jumped across. I'm not concerned. <laughs> um, is there a way to die otherwise? Probably not. So what do we do now? All right, let's just think about this. We've saved Jeffrey. We've thwarted the call of not Cthulhu, but Ialdabalaoloth. So I guess the only thing to do is maybe rest, uh, exercise Michael. So we probably should try to find him. I guess that's what we'll try to do. Go to the lighthouse. Um, isn't the lighthouse, like, blown up? It might be interesting to go up there to see. Oh, nice. You got your uh, computer all set, ready to go? Yeah, let's just go for fun. Let's see if we can go into the lighthouse or not. The oppressive weight of the lighthouse is gone, blown away in an explosion of violent fire. The lighthouse is now a hollow shell, open to the sky, surrounded by blackened remnants of its brooding legacy. The stairs now lead to nowhere but broken masonry and empty sky. All right, so yeah, we gotta go back to the breakwater, Mill Road. Um, where do we think Michael went? Back to the house? I, I don't know. Maybe he went to the cavern area, but I think we would die there. Should we check up on... Well, might as well just check up on Jeffrey, make sure he's okay. The young boy you freed from the island is standing here. He gives you a fearful glance. Uh, ask boy about there. I'm not supposed to talk to strangers, mumbles the boy, looking down at his shoes. Silently, the boy walks through the churning mud to the front steps of number 11, Milltown Road. For a moment, he stands there on the stoop, looking back at you, dirty, disheveled, drenched by the streaming rain. Then he turns and, raising his little fist, knocks on the door. The door opens. The old woman looks out, then looks down. She sees the boy, and it seems that she becomes just a little bit younger at that moment. My baby, you hear her say, and then she is on her knees, folding her son into her arms. She stands, still holding him, and looks over his shoulder at you. Thank you, she says. Her eyes speak volumes of gratitude that her words will never be able to express. Thank you for bringing him home. And then she goes inside and the door slowly closes behind her. Okay. Well, GG Jeffrey. So we did locate the de device, we rescued Jeffrey. We did conduct, uh, we still might need to do that actually. I, I'm pretty sure we don't need to do the rest of this. <laughs> the fly buzzing the office guy. Well, the tentacle monster now we found out, like, 
I'm surprised that wasn't really related to the Nihilum god. Like, it was killing some of the cultists that were going into it. That was interesting. Alright, I guess we'll just say find Michael now. Find and um, exercise Michael. Should we knock on the door? It would be best to leave the two of them alone for now. Alright, fair enough. At least we got to see. It was a nice little scene to see, for sure. Alright. Uh, or we could try to leave here on the train. <laughs> Alright. Junction. Uh, do we want to go to the library at all? Might as well check quickly. I doubt there's anything here. Ah, I, I'm surprised the library's still open at this time of night. Alright. Uh, Nero Street. Anyone in the pub? No? Anyone in the real estate office? Okay, there's only one message. Alright, whatever. Alright, let's go south. The bridge. Okay, town we're back to the town square. Michael, or rather the thing that has possessed Michael's body, is standing here. The poor old man. Oh yeah, Timothy Rebus is still at the top of the obelisk. I wonder if there is probably some way to save him. You get more points for that, I'm guessing. You can also see your umbrella here. Oh, that's right, we forgot to pick it up. I thought it was gone forever. It said the wind got, took hold of it. Michael looks at you and smiles. It is not a particularly pleasant smile. He walks over to the obelisk and places his hand against the blood-stained stone, then mutters something guttural under his breath. The twisted hieroglyphs begin to shine with an eerie phosphorescence, which quickly brightens and envelops Michael. His form wavers, then becomes transparent, and when the light fades, he has disappeared. The obelisk is still glowing. Oh, shit. Okay, if he's gone into that uh, womb of Nihilum, and we have to go in after him, there could be like a whole other chapter to this game. Oh, okay, let's save. Wow. Um, so, I think he touched... Touch obelisk? Yeah, he pressed it against the stone, yeah. As your fingers touch the gore streak stone, the green light grows, light grows brighter, fanning out to envelop you. The odor of rotting fruit briefly assails your nostrils. Your vision streaks, then blurs. There is the sound of rushing air, and when your eyes clear, you are somewhere else. The burial mound. Cave is lined, floor to ceiling, with mummified human corpses. Shrunken and desiccated, they lie in jumbled heaps inside regularly carved niches. Carvings cover the rock walls in between the niches. Grotesque, leering faces, too horrible even to look upon. Their features twitching and smirking in the wavering light that sifts down from above. Michael, or rather the thing that has possessed Michael's body, is standing here. Okay, so we are back at the burial mound. So that was just like transported us underground, but continuing with the obelisk. So maybe we have to do the flute thing now. This explains, by the way, we didn't have to worry about crossing the bridge again, so that's good. Hey, how are you doing, Joy? The obelisk bay stands before you, vast and shadowy in the green, murky light. At the narrower northern end of the vaguely egg-shaped cavern sits a massive stone altar, flanked on either side by a pair of strange vibrating columns. Suddenly, Michael lunges forward and grabs your arms. He shakes you, causing your head to whip back and forth and your teeth to click painfully together. Bitch! He hisses. Rotten, filthy bitch! You never give up, do you? You foiled me for the last time! There's no way to fix what you've undone tonight, but by all the unholy spawn of darkness, I will put you in a stone-cold place for it! And his hands lock tightly around your throat and begin to squeeze. Well, we are wearing the amulet. Uh, I don't know in this present condition with his ar hands around our throat if we can play the flute. <laughs> But we should try. We should try. I mean, we could be, like, strangled and then be like, flute, fingers. <laughs> I, I guess we should try it. Um, put, or, um, I guess take flute first. But we should also see what the death looks like, too. 
Taken. Grimly, Michael continues to strangle you. Put fingers... Actually, yeah, let's just take the death, I guess. But, uh, put finger on third hole and sixth hole. His iron grip has closed your throat completely. You cannot even draw in enough breath to cry for mercy. As inky black flowers bloom in your vision, you desperately search Michael's eyes for some sign, some glint of the person he once was, the husband you knew and loved. Sadly, you find nothing. As drool from his crazed rictus grin spatters down on your face and the world goes black, the last sight you see is the madness burning in Michael's red-rimmed eyes. You have died. Okay, so the problem was we had to take we had to spend a point or a turn to uh, take the flute out. So if we take the flute here, now touch the obelisk. Now put fingers on third hole and sixth hole. Okay, uh, play flute. You can't force any air past your strangled throat. Okay, well that makes sense. I figured it was worth a shot, but it makes sense. That's not gonna work. All right, so let's think about this. We're getting strangled. What do we do? Um, it's probably not going to be some sort of like violent thing. Is there any way we could get the... Uh, we can't do the flute ritual, clearly. Um, before... L let me just quickly look at the uh, pictograms. Yeah. Dancing around the mound. Comet rating fire and death on mound people. Bloody human sacrifice on the altar. Deserted mound, comet's eye, tower approval, wavy lines converge at tower tip. Uh. All right, first things first, we've got to get him off of us. So, how are we going to do that? Let's see what we got. We do have the handcuffs. Maybe we can, like, cuff his hands or something. All right, let's look at our inventory. We do have the amulet. Should we... What happens if we put the amulet on him? We are wearing the amulet, but somehow we're not a... F it's weird that we're not... Um, we are wearing it. What happens if we put the amulet on him? I don't know if that would be like kryptonite and it would hurt him. It's definitely an option. Something to look think about. Uh, we don't have the porn mag <laughs> porno magazine anymore. We do have the glass shard, so worst comes to worst, we could stab him, but it doesn't seem like a likely... I don't think he's going to affect, be affected by like simple violence like that. I mean, we could slit his throat as he's strangling us. I don't know. Uh, other stuff. Meat hook, we don't... Oh, we do have the meat hook again. So glass shard and meat hook are maybe options. Um, probably not, though. Uh, flute, we already... We can't play the flute. Uh, he's not going to be convinced by any sort of documentation. And the rest of it is just keys and shit. Yeah. Alright. So that, those are what occurs to me. We can do... Um, amulet. You already have that. Or remove amulet, I guess. Oh. The green phosphorescence fades away. The obelisk is only dark stone once again. Well, probably a walking dead. Uh, so just remove amulet, touch obelisk, put amulet on Michael. Let's see if this is like some sort of crypt kryptonite type effect. You can't not while he's strangling to you to death. Really? Okay, so that's not going to work. Um, I guess, you know, <laughs> stab Michael with glass shard. Not a verb I recognize. Attack Michael with glass shard. Without even blinking, Michael knocks the glass shard of glass from your hands, then backhands you hard enough to send sparks across your vision. A choice of weapon, he remarks. Silly bitch, he sneers. There is nothing you can do to hurt me. Grimly, Michael continues to strangle you. Okay, can we try that with the uh, with the meat hook? Before Michael can react. You whip the meat hook up in a vicious underhand arc, burying its point deep under your husband's breastbone. Michael shrieks and sinks to his knees, 
feebly plucking at the hook's wooden handle, which vibrates in time with his impaled heart. Blood suddenly pours from his mouth in a hot geyser, splattering onto the ground and onto your clothes. He looks up at you, gasping, and in his eyes you see a feeble, flickering spark of identity. One last dying spark left of the man you once knew and loved, and suddenly you realize he's there, in that body, the body that you just killed. It's Michael you're looking at. Uh oh. You have just killed your husband. <laughs> Why? He whispers through a dark bubble of blood. But you cannot answer. You are too busy screaming. You have gone utterly mad. Oh, that's great. All right, I suppose he deserved that. So we're going to have to do something to exercise him without it, without killing him. Oh, uh, that was good. That was good. All right, so how are we going to exercise him? Um, you know what? I'm guessing the documentation might have a... Edward probably must have said something. Edward or... Nah, probably not the real estate agent. She didn't know enough. Yeah, that was worth... Remember, we almost didn't pick up the meat hook, too, right? Because we used it to kill the William creature. So that was pretty good. All right, just to... Um, we're going to go back to an earlier save just so that we can um, consult the documentation. Uh, the letter from... So how did Edward resist... Um, well, I mean, he had the amulet to protect him, so that's why I tried to use the amulet and put it on Michael to sort of exercise uh, cro Croesus. Okay, so how did he do this? Um, the problem wasn't that he exercised him. The, the issue was that he, he never allowed himself to be possessed. So... Yeah, it was the amulet was the problem. But the age of 21, and then 10 years, he later gave in. Well, well, he started to be overtaken. And he never, he said he'd never discovered what to do about it. Then he just discovered the plans, and then he's like, well, fuck. He always returns to his blood, that's true. Oh, the needle, the needle would be his blood, maybe. What if we like threw the needle or something? Eh. Oh, shit, I <laughs> restored him to a death, God damn it. At least we got to read the letter as we died. <laughs> So, it always returns to his blood. Now, remember, the needle has Edward's blood on it. So, that could... Stabbing him wouldn't work. So, I think if it returns to... It has to go to his blood, we probably... What if we threw the needle such that he had to go towards it? Maybe that's the key. Um, yep. His is our blood. He always returns to his blood. Maybe that would be something. The tarot cards we don't have, so that's probably nothing. Comment has arrived already. He can smell blood too. So yeah, I think maybe if we do something with the needle. It's usually the canonical ending. Yeah, yeah, that's true, okay. All right, let's try the needle again. Um, I already have it. Uh, I guess throw needle drops. Ah. The throwing is the same as dropping it. Fuck. Can we like throw it in the niche or, or the altar? Throw needle on altar. You put the crusty needle on the altar. Oh, <laughs> within range of the altar. What the hell? So remember, they did say there was sacrifice. All right, so the needle's not doing anything. Unless we can, like, prick, <laughs> prick Michael with the needle. Yeah, uh, fine. Attack Michael with needle. Not a verb you Oh. Ah, choice of weapon. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. Alright. The needle doesn't do shit. <laughs> yeah, attack with the knee. Ah. He always returns to his blood. So... 
I mean, the needle has the blood on it. That's why I was trying to do something with it. But. Um, handcuffs. Can we, like, cuff him? Handcuff Michael. Not a verb you recognize. Uh, put handcuffs on Michael. This isn't cops. <laughs> oh, all right, Michael Gentry. That I give. I'll give you credit for that. Uh, that was good. That was good. All right, we tried the glass shard already. Stra oh, we could put him in the straight jacket, maybe. Eh, probably not. Uh, put jacket on Michael. <laughs> Immobilize him. Putting things on Michael would achieve nothing. Well, put. Put Michael in the jacket. You don't suppose him? We care. Yeah, I don't suppose he would care for it either. But it would fucking save our lives. So do it. All right, we gotta. Act we should focus on exercising him. Um, we already did it with the mirrors. The memo was about the mirrors. Blueprints was about the mirrors. The calipers, no. Broken claw. What was Claudia's letter? I guess we might as well read Claudia's letter again. Let's just go to a different save here. Read letter. Uh, hastily written letter. My name is Claudia Benson. I don't think she ever just figured out what to do, though. Yeah, I don't think that's had any good details. Yeah, she doesn't even know what's going on, really. Must be careful. Yeah, fuck. All right. Um, tattered, what was the drawing again? Yeah, maybe if we showed, oh, you know what we should do? Show him the wedding ring to remind him of himself. That's what we should do. I think that's what we should do. Oh, we should have shown the drawing to the William Monster. That would have been interesting. All right, let's take off our wedding ring. Remove ring. Okay. Um, touch obelisk. Show ring, or I guess give him the ring. Yeah. Show ring to Michael. There is one chance. If you could only somehow reach whatever weak flicker of humanity still survives within that shell. If the person who was your husband still exists somewhere, buried beneath that part that is, Croesus Cro 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 Verlac. Desperately, you slip the ring onto your finger and hold up your left hand. Your wedding ring gleaming softly in the strange green light. Michael is transfixed. He seems to want to recoil from the sight, yet is somehow simultaneously drawn to it. Suddenly his vase crumbles, the madness and stoic evil falling away to reveal confusion, fear, vulnerability, and anguish, all superimposed upon the malevolent features of Croesus, struggling to regain control. Uh, where? Oh, your score has just gone up by five points. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very nice. Let's save. 79 winning ring. So. Okay, he's struggling to regain control. We don't want to kill him. Um. Can we, like, leave, though? Can, now can we put the handcuffs on him? <laughs> How do I... Well, probably we won't, no. Probably we want to complete the exorcism. Yeah, that's all you had to do, BDR. That's all you had to do. Ask Michael about Michael. You can't speak. You can't force any air past your strangled throat. For just a moment, he's almost back with you. His features soften. His grip around your throat weakens. For just a moment, the thing that possesses him falters and loosens its hold. Okay, um... Do we, we don't have like a, a song or anything or something that we could sing to what, what's our song Michael alright if it loosens its hold can we talk to him now no then it is gone Michael shudders shakes his head as if to clear it of a fog and when he turns back to you his eyes burned with the red rim madness of Chris okay we missed our window Chris is very lucky okay so what do we have to do while he's um while he's weakened. We can't talk to him. Actually, we should restore because... Okay. Um, can we, like, give ring to Michael? Probably not. 
You shown him the ring once already, it's done all the good it's going to do. Fair enough. Can we, like, do the needle thing now? <laughs> Throw needle at altar? It's probably, it's not going to work. Bad idea, you're not a particularly good shot. Oh. Throw, or just throw needle. Nah, okay. Alright. So, how can we, like, we gotta keep, we gotta keep this going. And we can't do it verbally since we can't speak. So maybe show them the slip of paper. What, what a family album? No, we gotta have something that's with us. Was the trench coat a gift? <laughs> um, keys are not gonna do anything. Ah, other than the, other than the ring, we don't have much that's personal. The wedding ring. Well, the paper slip he was doing the research. I mean, that's kind of stupid, but. Fascinating, remarks Mike Lee Riley. But no, thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. Or maybe I'm supposed to do something when it when it's faltered. Maybe there's nothing you can do that first turn. <laughs> attack him with this dire cup. cup. Well see, I can't attack him because then we can't do that. Maybe show him Claudia's letter? Uh, so he knows what's going on. Show hastily written letter to Michael. No, thank you. No, damn it. Uh, memo. Well, if he's loosening his hold, can't, no, we can't put him in the jacket, right? Read the porno magazine. Put the amulet on him? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we put the amulet on him. Because um, if we're slightly free, then that could protect him from Croceus returning. Yes. In his moment of hesitation, you see your chance. Straining against his choking grip, you slip the amulet's cord around Michael's neck, letting the silver pendant drop to his chest. Instantly, Michael begins convulsing, arching his back and clawing at his chest. His jaws stretch open as if to release a towel of torment. But instead of voice, a thick, ropey stream of ectoplasmic mist pours from his throat. It pulls into the center of the room, roils about, then coalesces into a human form. The vaporous, half rotted apparition of Croceus Verlac himself. Well, shit. God, man, this game is just giving out all the points here at the end. You guys are just raking in the Cedrics. Jeez. All right, so we did, the, uh, we did, find, we did find an exercise Michael, but now we got to deal with... Uh, Proceus. Oh, maybe now is when we do the flute ritual. Yep, yep, I think so. Let's save. <laughs> Show boobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. We don't have body parts. Except for fingers. Put fi uh, fingers on third hole and sixth hole. Uh, Michael is doubled over with racking coughs, bringing up a thin trickle of blood. Oh, maybe Croceus would kill us. We should see what the death looks like. Even though his original body has long since crumbled to dust, the process of decay has continued to devour Verlac's soul. His apparition takes the form of an ancient rotted corpse, a blackened skeleton adorned with patches and strings of putrefied flesh wrapped in tattered cerements of ectoplasm. The ghost lets out a chilling, sepulchral laugh. You useless, puny mortal. It cries. Did you really think that there was any way on earth you could stop me? I have lived and thrived for over 400 years. Not even death can claim me. Very nice. I can't see any such thing. All right. Uh, ask Croceus. Croceus. About. Croceus. The ghost is utterly crazed. There is absolutely no reasoning with it. You sabotaged my dimensional beacon. I will build another. You drove me from my host body. I will find another. What next? Will you track down my, my disciples one by one and kill them all? 
Will you set this whole town to the torch? Yes, yes we will. That was a rhetorical question. There will be more towns, women, and more bodies, and more disciples. And always I will be there. And there is nothing you can do to stop me. Uh-oh, Michael begins shaking uncontrollably. <laughs> He's probably going to die. All right, let's just see what happens. Time passes. It would be almost too kind to kill you, muses the ghost. I've half a mind to simply let you go and spend the next 400 years tormenting and violating your future daughters and granddaughters through the next 12 generations. You've only got one amulet, you know. You can't protect all your children at once. Michael lets out a weak groan. But no, it finally says. After all you've done, I think that death would be most appropriate. But just to make sure you suffer, I think I'll start with your beloved husband. Tendrils of exoplasm snake out from the ghost's outstretched arms and wrap themselves around Michael, who begins flailing weakly. You rush to help him, but Michael is powerless, and you are too slow to prevent the tendrils from pushing into his mouth and nostrils, stopping his throat and filling his lungs with noxious gas. You work desperately, trying to administer CPR even as his body stiffens and his face turns blue. But in the end, there is nothing you can do. Michael gags one last time, arches his back, and dies in your arms. Thin, thread-like streamers of mist ooze from his mouth, along with his final breath. You're next, chuckles the ghost. Yeah, maybe just not have kids. Good call, Rex. <laughs> uh. The tendrils wriggle around you like eels, and you barely resist as they embrace you. There is nothing left to fight for. As the mist creeps down your throat and begins to drown you in its fetid breath of graves, you welcome the coming oblivion. You have lost everything. You are in sight of daylight with the foul breath of hell at your back. Alright, so let's just try the flute. Hopefully the flute situation works. Uh, put fingers on third hole and sixth hole. Play flute. Okay, the flute emits an odd mixture of metallic warbling notes which intertwine and harmonize eerily with each other. The strange harmony of the flute blends with the atonal ringing of the two columns, and the three sounds suddenly grow stronger, resonating with and reinforcing one another, intertwining like a dissonant, invisible braid. The sound increases in volume, piercing your eardrums and causing the very air to shimmer. Suddenly, the air above the altar begins to ripple as though with extreme heat. The very fabric of space seems to twist and buckle between the two columns. And then, with a sound like a wet sheet being torn, slowly down the middle, the fabric splits. You are immediately swept off your feet by a powerful sucking vacuum, pulling everything within reach toward the portal. Dust and debris, bones and loose rock from the burial niches, everything not nailed down goes flying across the temple. Didn't everything not nailed down go flying across the temple the last time? And into the portal? Uh, and into the all-devouring maw hovering over the altar stone. Desperately, you wedge your fingers into a crack in the floor. With the other hand, you grasp hold of Michael's pants leg and hang on for dear life. Verlock is caught like a gossamer thread in a tornado. Frantically, he claws at the air, but as an insubstantial ghost, there is nothing for him to hang on to. Shrieking and cursing, he is dragged inexorably back, closer and closer to the portal until the section draws his corpus out into a long trailing ribbon, like an unraveling cable-knit sweater. And in the next moment, he is gone forever, sucked into whatever alien dimension lies beyond that horrible rift. For a few agonizing moments, you don't think you're going to make it. Then, suddenly, the chaos stops, leaving you breathless on the floor. Painstakingly, you pry your stiff, bleeding fingers out of the crack and roll over. The rift is gone. The air is normal, and the columns are ringing quietly as if nothing had happened. Silence reigns. There passes some time that your memory cannot account for, a brief period of blackness and oblivion, you and your unconscious husband together in the subterranean vault. Perhaps you were unconscious as well, you cannot remember. At some point you become conscious again. You lift Michael to his feet 
putting his arm around your shoulders, and the two of you stagger up the Titan stairs to the surface. The ground begins rumbling just as you are exiting the house, but by that time, Michael has recovered some of his senses and can walk a bit faster. You make it down the bend in the road overlooking the town, just in time to see the town square collapse, the vile obelisk sinking into the earth. Several buildings are dragged down along with it. A gas pipe ruptures in the courthouse, sending a gout of flame high into the air, and soon the entire town is burning. Behind you, a muffled explosion and a sudden warmth against your back bespeak a similar end to the Verloc family mansion. For a moment you find yourself almost turning back, driven by instinct to rescue your belongings, but you stop, you turn away, and while Michael rests, you stand at the overlook and watch the sparks rise like fireflies, mingling with the stars in a clear, cloudless sky. Epilogue. He always returns to his blood. Edward Verlach. Okay, so we did all that stuff. Very nice. Did we get some points for that? Home. You are home, and it is a momentous event. Downstairs, Michael is waiting for you to bring him the wondrous news. To the east is the bedroom you both share, and to the north is your bathroom. Oh, God. A cool wave of uneasiness washes slowly over you. You're not sure why. Your score has just gone up by 15 points. Yeah, we're at 99 now. Damn. Okay, definitely save here. I do that home. Uh, as you know, we, we, we got to bath this. We got to bath this. So we got home, we got our bedroom to the uh, to the north here. Or no, the bathroom is to the north. And the uh, east is the bedroom. It is a Cedric Bonanza. Okay. Um, oh, and Michael's downstairs, seriously? I guess we should go to the bathroom first. <laughs> Your bathroom, an ordinary place, a normal, safe, familiar place. On the counter is a home pregnancy test. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Well, Michael calls excitedly down from downstairs. Have you looked yet? Oh, God. Oh, God. Look at the test. It's an ordinary pregnancy test, the kind you can get in any drugstore. The kind with the little window that turns pink if you're going to have a baby. Michael calls up again, this time sounding slightly worried. Hun, everything okay up there? Read the test. There's nothing written on the home pregnancy test. A nameless, formless apprehension grips you suddenly, leaving you short of breath. Why are you so frightened on what should be such a joyous occasion? Uh-oh. No, not another fly. You can hear a fly buzzing around, hovering over the back of your neck. All right, just take the test. Take it. Uh, should we check the uh, bedroom? Okay. Uh, there's nothing important in the bedroom at the moment. Okay, I can't... They're not telling me what the results of the tests are. Oh, oh, look at the little window. Got it. You stare down at the little plastic indicator and an inexplicable horror seizes you as you recall Edward Verlach's last words. And besides, who could say whether the crafty devil Croesus might not concoct some new way to enter the world through a new body, through that of one of my own daughters, perhaps? The ritual has always demanded a grandson, for Croesus was never one to let such a trivial inconvenience stop him. He would find a way. He always returns to his blood. The window is pink. The test is positive. From downstairs, you can hear Mo Michael joyfully talking to himself. Oh, I hope it's a little girl, he says. I've always wanted to have a little girl. You have won for now. In that game, you scored 99 out of a possible 100 points. You have banished the evil and saved your husband from a fate most hideous. But you were unable to solve the entire mystery. Thank you for playing Anchorhead. And after 23 hours and 13 minutes, the entire mystery of Anchorhead has not been solved, but we came damn close. 99 points. 
But that last point remains because, yes, we got knocked up. Croceus will have his way with generations to come. We were unable to not have a baby. Ah, oh, how unfortunate. Damn it. Ah, oh, I wonder if there's, a, yeah, wow, one point short. Um, maybe we could have destroyed the test, never look at the window or something. Try the amusing things? What amusing things? <laughs> Use coin. That's what I was going to try, Dark. I'm like, do we. If the game had led us after uh, verifying that the test was uh, positive, I was going to. Uh, yeah, like, alright, perform abortion. Like, hang on. Can we undo the last move and then. Uh, oh, see some suggestion for amusing things to do. Got it. Alright, type amusing. Neat ways to die, interesting Easter eggs, alternative solutions, significant dates, most bizarre bug report contests, or some things never change. Interesting. All right, this is all cool stuff. Um, I'm just, I'm just, uh, I guess, a bit worried if it turns out to be a lot of it. Let's see. Of course, you have already surmised that there are many creative ways in which you can die in this game. Whether or not you find that particularly amusing, well, that's between you and your conscious. I, for one, found them amusing to code. Perhaps we will find them amusing to experience. Oh, we, we can now actually see how many of the deaths we got, maybe, since we were trying to get them. Do not attempt the following at home. Standing on the train tracks while, until the train comes. We did that. Standing on the altar while you blow the flute. Oh, we did not do that. Damn. Wandering around the narrow aisles adjacent to the mill floor for too long. Yep, we did that. Not giving Michael the mirror when he asked for it. We definitely did that. Um, letting Michael die before you destroy Croceus. Yep, we did that. Reading the big black book in the abandoned church in its entirety. Did that. Examining William Verlack. We did that. Attacking Michael with the meat hook. Oh, we definitely did that. Uh, allowing the summoning ritual to proceed to its conclusion without sabotaging the beacon first. Yeah, okay. So we did of the uh, nine of them. Is there nine? Yeah, I think we got eight of the nine. That's pretty good. All right, interesting Easter eggs. Did you try just typing listen while Michael's in the shower in the morning of day two? We did. I think because someone told us to do that because it was an Easter egg. Uh, type it several times, yep. Oh, the puzzle box. Uh. Did you take a good look at the paintings in the gallery? One scene in particular will catch your eye. Yeah, we did, we did examine all of those, I think. I don't know if we examined them again. No, that's the thing. In Claudia Benson's last letter, she mentions that she did some research at the Miskatonic Library. Did you try looking her name up in the circulation register? We did. We did do that. You might find some interesting reading material. Yep, we did read all of those books. That's true. You may have noticed that your appearance changes as the game progresses and you get more and more filthy. Oh, no, we didn't examine ourselves while wearing the straitjacket or talk to ourselves. Actually, we did talk to ourselves. Did we examine ourselves during the epilogue? No, we didn't. Did you try screaming or crying? Did you try it while handcuffed to the island at the end of chapter four? No, we didn't. Oh, there were chapters. If you wait around for a while at the twisting lane or the rocky spur, you might catch something interesting. You might have to wait a long time though. Is that about the, yeah, no, we did have that happen. It came and ate us or captured us or whatever. At the rocky spur, not the twisting lane. Did you try, did you try typing X, Y, Z, Z, Y? No, good, yeah, we didn't do that one, okay. Alternative solutions. Um, discover the name Verla. Oh, other ways to discover the name Verla. Clear away the spider web. Oh wow! So there are actually a ton of puzzles that had multiple solutions. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Significant dates. Yeah, June twenty eighth is our real anniversary. Thanks for all the cards. Most bizarre. These quotes are taken from the actual bug reports from the first version of Anchorhead. Names have been obscured to embarrass the guilty. Second prize. Obscure fact. Edward writes that he pricked the inside of his cheek to draw blood for his ink. The inside of the cheek isn't a good choice for an inkwell since it's mighty difficult to get it to bleed. Have you bitten your cheek while chewing food? It hurts, but it doesn't bleed. Have you seen body manipulators pierce the cheeks with a metal skewer? They choose the cheek precisely because it won't bleed. You can try this at home yourself with a needle or a large safety pin. Sterilize it, psych yourself up, and pierce the cheek from the inside to the outside. It's very disconcerting, but it's not painful, and if there's any blood at all, it will bleed from the outside of the cheek, not the inside. Ugh. 
Uh, I, I, I don't have the uh, desire to try that. Uh, first prize. This is horrible, but I got really confused at the epilogue because I thought I hadn't taken the pregnancy test yet. It's amazing how difficult it is to express taking a pregnancy test when I have commands. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Some things never change. It is still possible to win the game and earn all the points without ever using the key to the sewers. I could, never could figure out how the hell to fix that. Oh, interesting. Um, how could you do that? I guess with an alternate solution. So can we undo and what if we had gone... Hang on. Go from the... Is there anything you can do in the bedroom then? There's nothing important at the moment. Why do they say at the moment? Can we go downstairs before getting the pregnancy test? You don't want to go downstairs until you have something to tell Michael. Oh man. Just want to see if there's anything anything else we could have done at the at the house, but apparently not. There was not. There was not. Alright, yeah, so we did miss one point. Um Let's give uh five points for the uh, end of the game, by the way. So here's I mean I could probably copy, uh, you know, whatever. I'll probably look later just to see what the uh, missing point was. Oh, shoot. Wrong. Uh, yeah, that's fine. But uh, all of that said, let's finally, uh, well, actually, final thoughts on the game, um, which was, of course, extremely, uh, extremely well written. Um, from from start to finish, it was really really well done. I was impressed. Um, and the last chapter or so was very uh, suspenseful and a lot of stuff going on. So I think like the end of the game was definitely uh, the last I guess couple chapters, starting from day three. I thought like really picked it, picked things up. Um, so actually the pacing was quite good because days one and two you're kind of easing your way into it, figuring out what exactly is going on. Uh, learning more and more over time and uh, then as soon as you really figure out what's going on then sort of shit gets real so actually I think it was like from a game overall game design standpoint I thought it was really well done uh, again there were a couple you know The Walking Dead wasn't great and there were a couple of puzzles that were sort of misleading but for one guy doing this and just having a few people help out with QA it was super impressive um, and like really, I think it took Infocom and really st stepped it up a notch in terms of like the storytelling. Again, I just wish it hadn't been quite so lifted directly from Lovecraft and had been a little bit more original in terms of the storyline, but totally fleshed out really well. So props to, again, to uh, Michael Gentry. The maze I found was terrible tack, but uh, I lucked out in getting to the lab and then... Um, also found we just were able to climb the chain down so we didn't have to go back through the maze, about through the narrow aisle. Um, I did figure out the solution to avoid the maze entirely. I just didn't, I didn't have the broom. It was still in the church cellar, so I could never get the broom back, unfortunately. Otherwise, I would have not had to deal with the maze at all. So, again, really strong game. Thank you again, uh, Bis Claveret, for the pick. We didn't discover the Verloc family secret in the archives. Oh, yeah, I don't even know what the family secret is then. I don't know. So let's head to our Hall of Adventure. And add game number 124, Anchorhead. Up on the shelf. All right, so this is usually my uh, signing off time. So we're going to have to do speed.